One day you stumble on a day in the life video. You heard the salaries are super high and the cloud industry is where it is at right now. You're fed up with your current job, your boss is being a pain in the ass and you're super ready for the change. You search for different roles in the cloud and a certain role keeps coming up time and time again. The solutions architect role. It sounds great. Like there's barely any coding involved, win, and it's one of the highest paying jobs. And you get to tell other people what to do rather than having to do the dirty work yourself. Sounds great, where do I sign up? A couple of months later, after studying for the Solutions Architects exam, spending hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars on training courses and materials, it's been long nights, early mornings, you have sacrificed, missed family events, you didn't even make it to your best friend's birthday last week, but it's gonna be worth it, right? After all, you're going to be a Solutions Architect. You're gonna be making a top salary, not worrying about bills, flying over the world talking to clients. Life is gonna be good. The time comes, you've got your AWS Solutions Architect Associate certification bagged, maybe even the Solutions Architect Professional certification. And now it's time to start applying to those jobs. You can't wait for the money to start flowing. Bring it on. But then, it's not the money that's flowing. It's the rejections. It's rejection, after rejection, after rejection. What could possibly have gone wrong? You did everything right. You passed the certifications. You did everything you needed to do. You've applied for over a hundred different solutions architect jobs now and not a single interview. What do you do now? Where do you go from here? Something had been driving me crazy about people trying to get into the cloud industry. And that was the number of people that were coming to me after trying to land a job as a solutions architect. They'd been preparing for months, potentially spending lots of money, but coming to me distraught because they were struggling now to land a job and wondering what to do next. To me, a solutions architect was always the, a very prestigious role. It was the type of role that you would get after working many years in tech, potentially going through lots of different positions, and then you eventually become a solutions architect. So to me, it felt almost unsurprising that people were struggling to land that type of role. After doing my research and speaking to many people, I'm starting to see what's actually going wrong here. And that's the fact that the title Solutions Architect or the job of a Solutions Architect is evolving and changing over time. Now, this is somewhat of a more recent trend. And that is what I think is at the root and the source of a lot of this pain and upset for people is the fact that that role itself is not particularly well defined. To help us unpack today's topic, I have a couple of guests. The first one is GPS from the channel YouTube channel Made by GPS. She's also the creator of the Learn to Cloud Guide and has mentored and helped hundreds, probably thousands of people into the cloud industry. So she understands some of these problems and challenges intimately well. The second person that I'll be speaking to today as well is Luca Mezzalera. He is an architect, has been an architect in the tech industry for many years and talks a lot about architecture. In fact, he quite literally wrote the book on architecture as well. Now, the last person you might also recognize is Andrew Brown. His courses on YouTube have had millions of views and he is someone who seems to know cloud certifications absolutely inside out and is a very prominent figure in the cloud education space. So we've got three different people here to come and talk about this topic of the solutions architect's role. So first off, I wanted to ask Andrew if he was seeing what I was seeing. And that was a big influx of people coming into the cloud industry and looking to take on the solutions architect role as their first position, finding that they're struggling and finding it difficult to land a job as a solutions architect. Here's what Andrew had to say about that topic. Right, I got a platform, I collect data on my students. They tell me whether they pass or they fail. And a lot of them come back to me and say, I, I finished I'm applying for solution architect roles can't seem to get them, right? That's probably similar to what you're seeing, right? Okay, so it turns out that I wasn't going completely crazy. And it seems that a lot of cloud educators were seeing the exact same thing that I was seeing. People struggling to land entry-level jobs as a solutions architect. Now, I have a lot of thoughts about what it is that's attracting entry-level people into Solutions Architect as their first role in cloud, because it's things like chasing after large salaries, like six-figure salaries. Maybe you've seen some sort of survey of the highest paying jobs in cloud and Solutions Architect appears on that. But there's also things like certifications. Amazon Web Services have named certifications after Solutions Architecture. And this can lead you into thinking that getting that certification means that you are then qualified for the job. Not necessarily. And also another big draw I think I see people coming into Solutions Architecture is to avoid the idea of coding or technical work. Now, 
of course there is potentially some merit in that because architectures aren't typically super hands-on but I think that that can be a particularly problematic viewpoint as well. I then asked Andrew as well what particular roles or areas of the cloud was he seeing as a good opportunity space for entry-level positions and if he had any data on that and this is what he had to say. I have a data set but you know it's a small data set because it's just me collecting information and so uh, you know if it's not in the tens of thousands I don't know if people are going to take me seriously but talking to CTOs. I say, you know, what do you need? Because I'm always trying to figure out what they need so I can go teach it. And I'm part of a CTO network. And, you know, when we get down to it, it's like always oh, cloud engineers. That's what they're asked. Like, that's the description they're, they're describing. And, and if you say solutions architect to them, they think of it as what I thought of it, which is like, it's the CTO's uh, best friend to alleviate them of, of technical, creative, exploratory work. Um, you know, they're not thinking of these juniors coming in to do that stuff or even seniors, like it has to be a very specialized thing. Okay, let's pause just for a second to address something Andrew mentioned in that last video, because this was an opinion that I saw when I spoke to many different people about the solutions architect role. I would go to them and ask them, hey, what do you think of the solutions architect as an entry level role? Now, I got a response from 90 to maybe 95% of the people that I spoke to that solutions architecture is not under any circumstances an entry level role. Now, this was a very commonly held belief and it actually was the same belief that I had. But over the course of the video, I'm actually going to show you that that's not entirely correct. So to check whether what I was hearing was actually truth and whether people were landing entry level roles and how many, I decided to run a poll on Twitter to have a look at how many people actually got into the solutions architect role as a beginner. Now I asked the question, if you are or have been a solutions architect, how many years of relevant professional experience did you have before you got a job offer as a solutions architect? 127 people voted in that survey. 50% of people said they had 10 plus years of experience before their first role as a solutions architect, which is kind of what I expected anyway. However, what was interesting to me was 23% of the people that responded to that survey actually had zero years of relevant professional experience before they landed a role as a solutions architect. Now that's interesting. Something's clearly going on there. Something is enabling these individuals to land entry level jobs without experience. Let's go back to what Andrew was talking about because I think he was on a bit of a roll and I want to see what else he has to say. But I get a lot, right? Because I'm running I have this, I have the free courses and the paid courses. And so like, it's a lot. And for me, it's like, I need people to have a good outcome because they're not going to progress and want to continue on their journey. So I need to set realistic expectations and, and, and steer them. So like there's an incentivization for me to know that correctly. The third one, and you've done this too, uh, I've done it in a different way, but it's like, go look at the job applications read 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 and type solution architect uh you know role and or any cloud role and just read what they're asking for and think okay what is this because you know people don't they're ill-defined just because it says the devops solution architect cloud engineer doesn't mean that's what it is you have to look at the components right but you know i think there's some disagreement of what goes in those boxes but we don't really have consensus from the community Okay, so now we come into a really important topic, and that's the fact that the roles in the cloud industry are not standardized. Now that might come as a shock to many people, especially to beginners coming into the industry who think that roles will be very clearly defined and they will be the same across different companies. And this is not the case at all, but it seems to be particularly problematic for the solutions architect role, which seems to be interpreted very differently across many different companies. Yeah, I'm a bit confused about, well, I was uh, confused about what a solution architect was because the first time I ever heard of one was when I was working for a real estate startup uh, a few years ago before I, I was really, I, I mean, I've been using cloud for a long time, but when I took it very seriously and I said, this is going to be what I'm doing, like educational cloud stuff. So I was working for a real estate company and they had a solutions architect and their role was kind of like, it was like, okay, this person has you know, the power of the, like the VP of engineering, the CTO, it depends the size of the company, right? But they're, they're not um, uh, burdened with uh, uh, organizing the team and stuff. They're off doing creative things, trying to find solutions and then deliver it to their team and say, hey, can you go out and build this? So it was kind of like a way of um, alleviating the VP of engineering or CTO role. And the thing was, you know, I was a CTO before that, before I was uh, doing that, uh, that real estate startup. I had been a startup multiple times. I've heard of many different roles and I really just didn't hear solution architect much. And so it was an upcoming term 
But, you know, as I understood it, it didn't have anything to do with cloud. It just had to do with, you know, it could be business, could be tech. Um, it was just intersections of architecting, solving, exploration, uh, that kind of stuff. Now, the role that Andrew defines here sounds very much like what I was mentioning 90 to 95% of people thought of when I was mentioning solutions architects before, and that it is not an entry-level position. Now, what Andrew is about to break down here in just a second is a new emerging trend of a more customer-facing, more almost sales-oriented solution architect than your traditional sort of classic solutions architect that I think many people in the tech industry are used to. And so then the next version of solution architect I heard was when I was interacting interacting with cloud firms, you know, their solution architect was different. It was like, okay, it was like a sales role where they're saying, well, we go out and we, we're, our goal is to uh, convince people to uh, buy into our solutions so we can implement them. And then they had uh, a variant of that, which was like their junior solution architect. I don't know if they distinguished it as senior or junior, but there was solution architect on the field and there was solution architect doing the implementation. Um, uh, the architect of that thing. And then, you know, getting into uh, uh, cloud certifications, AWS had the solution architect. And so I went back to that role that uh, that started with said, oh, I'd love to be like a, you know, a CTO that's not tied down and having fun. And so I thought that's what it was. But AWS's solution architect is something else. Um, and so you have all these different variants of it and it's confusing. So I really like the way that Andrew actually breaks this down. He talks about sort of a field solution architect and more of an implementation solutions architect. Now, of course, there are many ways of breaking down any role and we could categorize them in different ways. But these are two broad categories that I think are very useful. Now, when you talk about field, what we're talking about is a sales term. It's someone that's out in the field, talking to customers, bridging the gap between a company and potential future customers. Now, that type of solutions architect might be, you know, let's say working for one of the cloud providers and trying to marry up the architecture of a customer to the services that that cloud provider provides. And then on the other side, we have a more sort of implementation solutions architect, one that is actually working within a company, working with teams and getting into the fine details of that specific company. And that's what I think a lot of people think of when they think of an architect is that more implementation oriented solutions architect. Now, you might be open to both of these interpretations of the role or it might be one of those was the one that you had more in mind. However, I don't see many people talking about these two categories. In fact, GPS has a funny story about this exact scenario because she talks about how she was considering the solutions architect as a role for her own career, but she was thinking more about this sort of implementation type of solutions architect rather than this sort of field, more sales or customer oriented solutions architect. Let's go and have a listen to that story and you'll see what I mean. Like for me, an architect was always someone with years of experience because you were creating the blueprints and you would tell, like you would know which services to put together. And that can only come if you've been through it for a couple of projects, if you've done, played a couple of other roles in other projects and you fully understand. And to me, also this pre-sales thing was new to me and it only came up because I remember tweeting. I remember tweeting, hey, I think Solution Architect is the next role I wanna do after advocacy. And I had a couple of colleagues in Microsoft hit me up on Teams and they were like, you might wanna rethink this because this. And then they introduced me to this. And this was this year, man. This was this was like a couple of months ago. I can't, maybe like two, three months ago, they were like, you know, Solution Architects, like the majority of them now, it's like very like sales heavy. There's quotas, all those kinds of things. Like, I know you, I know you, you're more so in focus on like the engineering and implementation aspect might want to reconsider. And I was like, I did not know that. I thought an architect was, you know, implementing. So. so really, you shouldn't feel bad here. This caught me off guard and it clearly caught Gwyneth off guard as well. The fact that Solutions Architect is interpreted in different ways and there are so many different flavors of what a Solutions Architect actually does. The important thing that you need to take away and realize here though is when it comes to targeting Solutions Architect as a role for your career or as a job that you want to apply for is that you really need to look into what that specific company is defining as the Solutions Architect role and what are the specific skills and background that that company is looking for and not just thinking that solutions architect itself is a generic skill set because it absolutely is not it's very different interpretations across different companies parts of the industry and certainly in different parts of the world at microsoft we have solution architects that are more of what i feel like people consider the entry-level ones like very like pre-sales focused sales pre-sales 
and they don't do any implementation. And there's also solution architects that are dedicated to work with, with clients actually implementing, which I think in other companies, they call them like cloud architects or different names. So even within like a company itself, there's a lot of confusion. Now, I know a lot of people won't just be getting certifications in Amazon Web Services, for instance, but they will also naturally gravitate towards Amazon as an employer and be looking to apply at AWS as a role as a solutions architect. Now, I think it's probably about time that we bring in Luca, who actually works for AWS as an architect, who can break this down a little bit more for us. And what he's going to explain is the differences when working for, let's say, a cloud provider as a solutions architect, working closely with customers, versus a solutions architect that works, let's say, in a product or more traditional company, where they're working more internally rather than with external customers, and how that affects the different demands on the role and the different skills that you need to have and how you need to be thinking about gathering those skills. To be honest, uh, I think, uh, you know, you can find a variety of people in, in, in the, with, with the title. I'm personally not reliant too much on, on that. Uh, for me, title is just, let's say, something that you need to have, but I've, I think it's more interesting the behaviors of the people and uh, what they're doing. Uh, I, I believe uh, uh, that, you know, when you start your career straight into architecture, you need also to understand what kind of architecture you are. Um, because if you think about working on a product and being an architect, it's completely different from working in, in AWS and being an architect. Uh, because the, the way how uh, I see is that very often, uh, uh, yes, you might have the title, but you're not acting as an architect. The, the role is completely different from uh, uh, how I was an architect uh, in my previous jobs in different organizations. Uh, mainly because um, we are not part of uh, uh, every single context, right? So you are not in the, or every single room that matters that you will understand the hand-to-hand -hand thing. What we can help is trying to do our best on uh, understanding the customer, understanding what, what they are doing, what they are trying to achieve, asking questions for, for gathering the, the, the context, but we're not living day to day with the customer. And that's the thing, depending on how the company sees the solutions architect role will affect how you should approach your job hunt towards it. It's important to really understand that those different categories exist because when you're Googling or on YouTube or looking for different content or uh, insights into the solutions architect's role is that people might not necessarily be making this distinction, but it's vitally important that you do and you understand which type of role you're actually applying for and what skills you'll need for that role. So is the solutions architect a beginner role? Sure, there are certainly companies out there that are hiring for people into solutions architect title roles that are coming in with very little or even no experience. However, those are typically larger companies that have the training budget to bring those people on, and those might also be in these more customer-facing roles. So if you're looking at potentially being more of a builder type, something like what GPS mentioned earlier on, it might make more sense for you to start in a more individual contributor role like cloud engineer or software engineer, something like that, and then potentially look at making a move into solutions architect slightly later in your career. Something that I'm always mentioning to people is the fact that your career does not have to start with the same job as your dream job that you might want to have in a few years time. So it's up to you. You could target Solutions Architect now if that makes sense for you, or you could leave that as a general aspiration for your career that might materialize in, let's say, five or 10 years. However, just one word of caution though, is I would say if you're coming into the industry with little or almost no experience, I would advise you to try and stay away from applying for solutions architect roles, where it's clearly that they're looking for someone with a deep level of experience, and they're looking for someone who has came up through the builder route and looking for someone who can be potentially a little bit more hands-on with their team, because ultimately if you don't have that experience, you're going to really struggle in that area. However, there is one caveat there. Now, I do see people being successful jumping into solutions architect roles if they come from a professional background. Let's say you've worked in consulting, finance, something similar to this where you're working a lot with stakeholders, you're communicating a lot, well, then you're going to have quite a lot of crossover to the solutions architect role, and that professional experience could count for something if you're able then to go out, build your tech skills as well to complement that. Now, I'm constantly mentioning to people that they should focus on a job title. However, I must say that, that advice falls apart a little bit when it comes to the solutions architect, just because of how widely interpreted this role is in the cloud. So what I would say specifically for solutions architect role is yes, 
tailor your job hunt to the title of Solutions Architect, but also make sure you tailor your job hunt towards company specific versions of Solutions Architect. What that means is going to the careers pages of specific companies, looking into job descriptions for those companies. Go look at the job applications. Read, 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 read. Read what they're asking for and think, okay, what is this? speaking to people that have also worked for those companies as well. And I would largely say that sitting on social media doesn't really count or isn't going to be sufficient research for you to really understand what's needed for that role in a specific company. I'd really implore you to get the laptop out and start doing some browsing on the internet, start to build up some notes and start to build up a clearer picture of what a solutions architect looks like in the companies that you want to apply for. If you enjoyed this video and you like this type of career content, I can definitely recommend a video I made quite recently where I break down the skills that are required for a bunch of different jobs in the cloud industry by looking at over 2000 job descriptions. I automated a bot to scrape all that data and then analyze the results. That might be useful to you if you're at the point of trying to figure out which job is the right job for you in the cloud industry. I will be putting out lots more videos about careers in the cloud industry over the coming weeks and months. So be sure to subscribe if you want to stick around for more content. My name is Lou, this is Open Up The Cloud, and I look forward to sharing your I Got The Job post on social media sometime soon. See you in the next video.